Greetings and salutations, Geonerds. This week we'll go on a journey to find a lost river. Well, creek really. Wheat Creek, or Big Creek as it was sometimes known, was the water supply that got Brisbane established to where it is today. We'll do it John Rogers style from today way back to the early 1800s with some interesting geology and history along the way. So you know what I'm going to say. Let's rock. Hey Geonerds, just firstly I'd like to thank all the new subscribers to the channel. Subscribing really helps in the wild and weird world of YouTube. And if you want to get a ding every time I push out a new video, and I do quite a few of them, smash that little bell. So let's get on with the video. I begin today by acknowledging the Turrbal people, traditional custodians of the land on which we all live today. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge they got royally dicked by my ancestors. I take no pride in the knowledge of what was done to these people and recognise their pain. My ancestors came from Northern Ireland, a land not unfamiliar with land theft, murder and genocide. They should have known better. This is the second in a series of videos on Brisbane's lost waterways. All creeks really. We only have one river, and as I said before, it's far from lost. The municipality of Brisbane was proclaimed on the 7th of September 1859. John Petrie was the first mayor, and a really top shelf Queenslander he was as well. And so was his son, John Petrie. Unlike one of his aldermen and member of the Finance Committee, Patrick Mayne, the murdering nutjob of old Brisbane town. Here's Johnny! We'll hear more from him in the field trip. Before the 1840s, simple surface drains or covered drains were used in towns. An ovoid brick drain running down Adelaide Street between Albert Street and Creek Street was completed in March 1877. It joined the Brisbane Tuff culvert and was still in use until 2008. The culvert was dismantled as part of the construction of the Inner Northern Busway and a section of it has been reassembled as a feature on the King George Square bus platform, Platform 1. OK, OK, enough of that. Wrong video. Anyway, what I've done here is I've taken the ham map of 1863 and overlaid it over the uh, current Brisbane map and you can see that the uh, little wheat stream starts down at Eagle Street, winds its way through right underneath where those big uh, those big fig trees are, underneath believe it or not uh, the whole um, central plaza, right behind all the shops in uh, Queen Street and uh, Adelaide Street, then it crosses the road right where King George Square is, right where the, in fact the, uh, the City Hall is, it goes under all those buildings, you'll see all that soon, and then it formed a with a little uh, leet, it formed a, uh, a reservoir which Brisbane got its water from. That's where it came from. And even though the hand map doesn't show it, it actually goes right up. On this map, Roma Street is called New Street, but it goes right up to the barracks It's uh, till the watershed just finishes there. Anyway, we'll have a look at that in the field trip now. Folks, you can see behind me the Kookaburra Queen because we're right on the Eagle Street Pier and we're just about to go underneath the old coffee club and all these other posh restaurants that T Rex come forward to eat in. 
but let me tell you this is the start of Wheat Creek right here and as usual T-Rox has arrived at high tide so no Colbert. Just as a quick uh, backup here you don't want to be playing in these culverts in 2015 a guy died in this exact culvert when he was up there in a kayak having a bit of a poke around and one of Brisbane's little growler storms dropped 800 millimetres of rain in the city in about 20 minutes and the police unfortunately found his body so you know just don't here I've just got a sketch of old Brisbane town looking up towards the tower mill and with the mountains in the background there I think those mountains are slightly exaggerated but even so that's the way it is it's a really beautiful image however if you look carefully down in the right hand side and I'll put a ring around it that is a bridge over the Wheat Creek bridge over Wheat Creek way back there I think it was about the 1830s a very early image this is the intersection of Elizabeth Eagle and Creek and once you've got here, well, it's a bit creek, but Eagle Street's just around the corner. So is Adelaide Street, they're all there. Big stand of ficus, awesome, beautiful thing. They're not the ficus macrophylla, I think they might be just rubber trees, but I'm not sure. And if you look carefully, you can see where the creek went up. You can't see it, but if you know you're looking, the cars on the other side of those trees are lowered down because that's where the creek ran. It hooked around, then it ran back across and it ran just in the, under that building there where that the store sign is. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. You can still see the scar in the landscape. Gee, we're becoming psycho geographers. Here's a little laneway. As you can see, the road level at the back is significantly lower this is where the creek came through and it's culverted under here I talked to a lovely man at Raptown Plaza called Steve who uh, told me where the culverts were extremely helpful man appreciate that Steve G'day. so the creek heads off underneath Central Plaza and hooks around and runs up behind these buildings in Adelaide Street. We'll have a look at that soon because that's worth doing. As you can see it's all uphill now. Straight ahead is the downhill and that's where we'll go. We find ourselves on Queen Street. Let's see what we can see. We might even see some Benedict stone up here from old Duhigg the Builder. Let's see how we go. Here's a completely awesome example. Benedict Stone. This is on the Manor Apartments. And I'll put my hand in the shot to give you an idea of the coarseness of it. Which is really a beautiful thing. But I won't get too close or we'll lose focus, but this stuff is falling to bits. I'm glad they didn't build a uni out of this, because that is seriously falling to pieces. Look at the colours. They were able to emulate all the tuff colours. It contains tuff, cement, bits of rocks and pieces, whatever they could find. Probably been a good way to use up the uh, quartz out of the Brisbane, uh, the Bunya Philite, but this whole building is Benedict Stone. So we're looking down Queen Street here. No science prizes for guessing where the creek is over there. We'll uh, walk down there and have a look at that. We're in front of the post office looking north at Queen Street. It goes under there and where we were before, behind the building here, 324 Queen, and we can see it over there and we'll pick it up over there in a few minutes. We are actually walking right on top of the creek now. It just kisses the edge of this intersection, runs along where the footpath is on this side and ducks back down behind these buildings in front of us. We'll have a look down those laneways. I guarantee you there'll be some evidence of it in the landscape. So here we are at Rose Lane. It's been modified a bit, but you can see the old creek bed down there. It crosses the road just here and 
heads off on the next Queen's Plaza. So we're not going to see it for a bit, but there's more evidence. Hang in there. Here we have the entrance to the Brisbane Arcade. T Rocks' favourite building in Brisbane, I might add. This is the laneway, and as you can see, a creek runs through it. And I guarantee when it really rains, a creek still runs through it. We're going to see where it crossed out of here. From now on, we've got some real interference in the geography, topology, geology, because we've had King George Square built right in the middle of this. But we'll, we'll get it in our mind's eye. We'll see where it is. So right down the end there was where Patrick Maine's butcher shop was. The murdering nut job. Anyway, long gone. Awesome family. Love his kids. Thank you for the UQ. Have a nice day. Rock's favourite shops. They sell bog. said about the laneways following the old creek beds because it was useless land so they didn't want it and then when they put the creeks under cover it wasn't useful there you go look at the downhill slope on this that is the creek in the bottom of that where that coffee shop is can't really show you the creek up this way because somebody built city hall on top of it then they built these buildings on top of it but of course what they don't do and they never do is erase the scar in the landscape. Hey John, so there we are. There is the old creek heading across Turbot Street under the overpass there and under that massive big federal court complex and all that other stuff. And we'll go up the road a bit and we'll see where it comes out of that palaver. Because as you can imagine, when you sink a 20 or 30 metre foundation for a building in a car park, you do tend to miss the geology and the geography around a little. Everyone sees this here and they know it's old and they know it's probably historical. This is the Wheat Creek culvert that had to be pulled up when they did some work in Adelaide Street. Brisbane Tuff went under Adelaide and it's been replaced with the modern culvert now. You can come here anytime. Platform 1, King George Square bus station. So from down there at the Turbot Street intersection, the creek ran under the Federal Courts building, pretty much underneath the old coffee club over there, underneath this new monstrous Federal building. And there was a, right where this building is, there was a, a little a little leet, a little dam that held back water. And then up there, and we'll just go up there in a bit, and it ran out just over here, but you can still see the scar in the landscape where the creek bed was. Uh, here we are in Upper Rome Street opposite what used to be the Roman Street station is all the demolished transit centre the station still there. There's all the Roman Street Parklands poshy flats. Lovely place to live, I'm just jealous. Down here next to the big cop shop we have a drain. And that drain says dump no waste close to creek. Hmm. I wonder what creek that is. Brisbane River's about. Mm, it sort of is that way, it's a long way uphill. I like it. When I was back in uh, Raptorian Plaza talking to Steve, nice guy, he told me that uh, when you get the first big rain after a long dry, 
underneath our carrying plaza there's a culvert that comes out, which is obviously the old wheat creek culvert. And the first thing that comes out of it is a whole bunch of garbage and waste and oil and stuff goes out into the river. Because as you saw by that sign, dump no waste flows to creek. Mm. Well, there you go. Don't listen to those signs, I think it's important. Well folks, that's the end of our little sojourn today. A lot of wind coming up, probably going to rain, but that's okay. Tea rocks is not made of sugar. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. We walk through the full length of Wheat Creek right up to its upper. This is the end of its, uh, its watercourse here. It can't go any further. The watershed's right here. Just past here, we drop down into Boundary Creek, which is another creek we'll do. And past that, there's Western Creek, which we've already done. And after that, there's Langville Creek, which we, we will do very soon. Anyway, until next time, keep rocking. Well, it would be a T-Rocks video if we didn't talk about geology. So here's a uh, rock type map of the CBD and you can see that yellow is alluvium, as in river gravels. And it just happens to line up perfectly with Wheat Creek. So the uh, purple is of course the uh, Narren Lee Fernvale formation, which is all shales and schists and mainly schist in the CBD. And the yellow is uh, quaternary um, alluvium, so it's just river gravels. And uh, as I said before, it lines up perfectly with our creek. Hey Geo Nerds, that's it for another week. Oh, this is a great one, I love this. Had a great walk through the city, met that lovely guy called Steve, had a good chat. And uh, yeah, it, Wheat Creek was just amazing. It was lovely to uh, re-walk that entire watercourse. And uh, next week we're gonna do Boundary Creek. And it's a good one. It was turned out to be more complex than I thought it was. Although it was nice and compact because it was getting a bit hot. But anyway, look, uh, that's it for the week. Thank you for all those new subscribers. I really do appreciate it. Tell your friends, click all that stuff. You know what to do. Um, and of course, I'm just waiting for my new magazine to arrive. I love my uh, good uh, rock collecting magazines. I've got a new one coming called Quartz Illustrated. Thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, and hey, you made it this far, please help us to poke the algorithm and smash that like button like it's Space 1999. And if you want to see more, subscribe and share this with, say, a thousand of your closest friends. And let's see just how far that little algorithm can go before its CPU explodes. Copy you later.